Hey, I'm Adam Young from Sentinel 3D Scanning. As any inspector or CMM programmer knows, some parts are more difficult to inspect than others. There are the easy parts, the ones that you can just take one look at and instantly know how to inspect. And then there are the hard parts, the ones where you have to study the drawing for hours on end before you really know what you're up against. For most folks involved in manufacturing, tools like calipers and micrometers and height gauges are tools that you've probably at least heard of before and maybe have even used before. But for those of us that are heavily involved in dimensional inspection, these types of tools tend to get left on the shelf a little more often. In today's video, we're going to discuss when tan tools just won't cut it anymore. To keep things practical, we're going to take a look at some real life parts and we'll discuss which tools will or won't be able to measure them. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first part that I wanna look at today is a volume knob. This volume knob is off of a podcasting microphone. It's just mounted on the side and you can turn up and down the volume. And this volume knob is a very simple part. You have three planes, one on the top, one at the bottom of this hole, and then one on the bottom. You have an outer diameter and an inner diameter, and that's it. That's really all there is to this part. And this is a part that would be a great part to use a hand tool to measure. You could use a micrometer on the outside here going this way. You could use a micrometer on the outside going here on the outer diameter. You can maybe use a caliper on the inside for the inner diameter and uh, just a simple depth gauge to get the depth from the top surface down to this inside bottom surface. So very simple part, very straightforward. This part is probably not going to require any sort of fancy equipment. Uh, the next part I want to measure, it's a little bit more complicated, but still pretty basic, and that is a handlebar clamp. And this clamp is from a 1967 Suzuki T20 motorcycle, which is a motorcycle I had in college. This part, it's rigid, which is good. It's shiny, which may be not so good for some measurement methods. Now, my prediction on what this drawing looks like is it probably, if it were made today, you probably have a datum surface here on the surface that mates to the handlebars. And then you'll probably have a uh, pattern, a hole pattern here to be used as your secondary datum. And so I think you could measure some stuff with hand tools on this part. But because you have a cylinder as your datum A and then a bolt hole pattern essentially as your uh, datum B, it's probably going to be a little bit more complex for hand tools. So yeah, my recommendation, recommendation for this would be a CMM. I would recommend getting some sort of a fixture for this thing and holding the part up. Probably using a CMM to come in from the side either with a star probe or with your 5-axis probe tilted to measure this bottom surface, and then uh, coming in from the top to measure these holes here to measure your bolt hole pattern. Uh, from there, then you could get uh, all of these outer surfaces and relate them back to the datum features. You could use a 3D scanner, but this part is pretty reflective, so the data might come out pretty noisy without a coating. So CMM, probably the best way to go on this part. For the next couple parts, we're going to take a trek down into the down into consumer electronics land. And the first part I have here is a faceplate for a Nintendo Switch controller. Uh, this faceplate is somewhat rigid, but it's also fairly flexible, kind of flimsy. Um, it's kind of a semi-gloss and matte black color. And it does have these little inserts that go into the plastic that um, allow the plate to snap down onto the controller with magnets. So a couple of ways I could see this inspection going is either these uh, inserts are, are coplanar and maybe they're the datum feature A. That would probably be my first guess. Or maybe they're using a one of these organic surfaces as the datum feature A. 
you're probably not going to be able to inspect too much stuff with hand tools. So you're probably going to be stuck with either a CMM or a 3D scanner for this. Probably have to have a custom fixture to hold this down if you want, want to inspect it with like a CMM. I think I would probably go with a 3D scanner just because it is such an organic shape. The 3D scanner could just get all of the geometry. You're not gonna be collecting as many points as fast on a CMM, so if it's 3D scanning, probably won't need a fixture, but it might need a coating because it is kind of a semi-gloss black color and these inserts are kind of shiny, so might require a coating there. All right, continuing on our consumer electronics trend, the next thing I wanna look at is actually an assembly, and that is an iPhone 5S. Now this is, in my opinion, the best iPhone Apple has ever created because now they're way too big. But for whatever reason, Apple actually released these drawings. You know, I highly doubt that these are actually the drawings they use internally, but it is kind of telling uh, as to what they're looking for. Typically when you get these assembly level drawings, they're looking for things like gaps and steps and things that industrial designers really care about. So a lot of things controlling how nice this phone looks. So things like gaps between like the buttons and the chassis here, uh, steps, step height of these buttons, concentricity of the camera lenses, um, gaps between like the SIM card slot, all of those things are gonna be things that the industrial designers are looking for. For something like this, you're not gonna be able to use hand, hand tools, maybe for the step heights you could, but I think for the gaps, you're probably going to have to go with a integrated solution that uses a chromatic confocal line sensor or a blue line laser, um, and then some software that you can set up an algorithm that actually decides where that gap is or where that step is and how it should be measured. Maybe mounted on a six axis robot. And then you could use an OMM to measure the concentricity of like the lenses and things like that. So there's some stuff that you could do with an OMM on this, but a lot of it will probably be a custom solution. And last but not least, the final part that I have here is a Yodos Rocket Air lens, camera lens blower offer 5000 thingy. Uh, basically you squeeze it and air comes out, blowing the dust off of your lens. This particular part here, you might look at it and think, oh, I can use hand tools to measure some of that. And you could, but one issue is that it is kind of squishy, so you have to be gentle with it. And you also have to consider that there's this inner s sphere on the inside here, so it's it's actually hollow in here to allow air to pass through. If the inside of this sphere here, if you if that's a critical dimension to you, and it probably isn't on something this cheap, there's probably not anything that you can use to get down inside of there to measure that accurately, other than an industrial CT scanner. Which is unfortunate because industrial CT scanning is crazy expensive. If you get a cheap one for smaller parts, you might be able to get one for three or 400,000. But if you get a nice one that can measure a variety of parts, you're probably gonna be looking at over $1 million. Hopefully that inner <laughs> diameter doesn't matter. I don't think it does for this part because it's so cheap. Um, but if you do have a feature like that, you might have to pay for an industrial CT scanner. One of the things I often tell my customers is that if it was hard to make the part, it will also be hard to inspect the part. That and anything is possible with enough time and money. But just in case you don't have a ton of time and money to figure out how to inspect your part, here are some tips you can use to help get the job done. One, change the design. Sometimes even simple non-consequential changes can make the inspection process much simpler. Two, use multiple tools when inspecting the part. Perhaps you can use a CMM for some of the measurements and then hand tools for the rest. Three, switch to go, no-go gauging, AKA qualitative gauging, instead of quantitative methods. I know the engineers like to have their numbers for CPKs and other statistics, but getting an accurate pass-fail result is better than nothing. Four, 
Make sure you're only inspecting the dimensions that truly matter. You know that rule you read about in ASME Y14.5, the one that says something about dimensioning and tolerancing being complete? Maybe don't take that rule quite so literally and only put the critical dimensions and tolerances on your drawing. To summarize, hand tools are great for a lot of applications, but sometimes there is just no substitute for pricey equipment. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and do all those other youtube -y things. And if you're ever in need of 3D scanning services for inspection or reverse engineering applications, make sure to check out Sentinel 3D Scanning at sentinel3dscanning.com.